And so this is the thought here, unto the age of the age, or unto the ages of the ages, um, the fullest amount of time forever, eternity, that sort of thing. Okay, but that that's just to say, because you're going you're gonna to see that, right, in prayers and the Mass and that kind of thing. And it doesn't mean a century there. Here, in the first sense of the word, it means a century. Okay, seculum <coughs> as centum ani. Centum ani vel seculum as longum tempus. A hundred years or a century is a long time. Tempus again. Tempus temporis. And we'd expect that to be neuter, right? Neuters end in A, C, E, A, R, U, R, us, L, N, and T. Tempus temporis. Be sure to note that. Yeah, a very common word. Third declension, neuter. Duo secula sunt ducenti ani. Two centuries are two hundred years are two hundred years. Homo sanus non aginta velletiam centum annos vivere potest. A healthy person is able to live, can live, vivere potest. Non aginta velletiam centum annos Non aginta, centum, don't decline, right? Anos, of course, does. What case is that? The accusative plural. So in chapter 12, we had the accusative of extent, right? Length, measurement, expressed with the accusative case. The sword is two feet long, like this. We say... Gladius duos pedes longus est. The sword is long to the extent of two feet. Duos pedes. Duos pedes. Okay, so that was what we had in chapter 12, and then I said that we'd get that used later on as the accusative of, <coughs> as the accusative of duration, too. So it's, so it's not just a spatial idea, but also a temporal idea. So, here we can say, right, homo sanos potest vivere, let's say, centum, Anos. So same structure as that other sentence, but the idea is temporal here. Yeah? And we you know we do the same same thing in English. How long does a person how long did he live? Where long probably starts as a spatial idea, but then we apply it to Temporal concepts. Okay, question here. Um, let's see, what line are we looking at right now? No problem, we're looking at line 10. Line 10. Homo sanus, a healthy person, potest vivere, is able to live 
non aginta velletiam centum annos. For, uh, to the extent of, 90 or even 100 years. Chapter 12 is a spatial idea, and here it's a temporal idea. Okay, can do both. <coughs> the accusative of extent, duration. Line 11. Ducentos annos vivere nemo potest. No one is able to live for 200 years. For 200 years. Mensi primo et mensi tertio a deis nomina sunt. Those are datives there. Mensi primo, mensi tertio. The names, we'd probably switch it into a genitive in English, of the first month and of the third month are from, maybe come from, would sound better, are from gods, a deis. Januario adeo Jano. Marzio adeo Marte. The name to January month is from the god Janos. The name to the March month, Marzio, is from the god Mars. That's to put it Literally, so you see what the the grammar is. But in English, we would probably say, right? January has its name from the god Janus. March has its name from the god Mars. Janus et Mars sunt Dei Romani. Janus and Mars are Roman gods. Going on there at line 15. Janus es Deus cui due facies sunt. Janus is a god to whom, for whom, there are two faces. So again, the dative of possession. So you can feel free to translate that in English with the ver verb to have. Janus is a god. Change the dative to a nominative. Who has two faces. Right? He faces the old year. He faces the new year. Januarius, the month of January. Mars Deus Beliast. Mars <coughs> is the god of war. And March must have been about the time that things were dry enough, or warm enough to go off to war, which you would have done pretty much every year. Main, going on at line 17. Mainsis September nominator a numero septem. You can see that there. Septem, September. September month, again, the names of the months are, are adjectives. We're not going to say September month in English. I'm just doing that because so you see what the, what the grammar is. In English, we'd say, well, we'd say the month of September. But I don't want to say that here so that you're not confused. September month is named, nominator, from the number seven. October, November, December, ab octo, novem, decem. So the verb is understood again, now in the plural. October, November, December are named from eight, nine, ten. Why is that? Nam 
tempore antiquo, martius mensis primus erat. So nam gives our reason for because tempore antiquo in ancient times, in olden times. Is there a way we can do that in the singular uh, in English where it sounds right? Um, in the past, uh, a long time ago, the March, Martius, was the first month, was the first month. And I guess because that's when you're your campaign season started. So a couple interesting things happening in that sentence. The first thing is, well, yeah, the first thing is tempore antiquo. What case is that? Well, antiquo could be dative or ablative, right? But tempore can only be one case, the ablative singular, third declension now. Tempore antiquo. This is the ablative of the time when. Ablativus temporis. The ablative of time. In giving designations of the point of time at which something occurs, classical Latin uses the ablative of time without the preposition in. When you get into later Latin, um, all bets are off. You'll see the you'll see the ablative of time. I mean it's always the ablative of time when, whether you have it with the preposition in or not. Um, but used without the preposition um, is something that in later Latin uh, it just depends on what the um, on what the author is doing, right? If he knows his, his classical Latin or not. In English, right? In is the word we're generally going um, to use. So, nam tempore antiquo for in olden time, Martius 